Hey, this is Doug Field, CEO of the Institute for Healthcare Consumers, along with my co-host, Brent Macy, and welcome back to the segment of Healthcare Consumers and Radio. Uh, I love the title of our next guest. She's not only the chief executive officer of a company, but she's CEO, chief energizing officer of Sonic Boom, uh, uh, Dana Korn. Dana, uh, good morning to you. Morning. How are you this morning? Uh, great. Good to have you on this morning. It's great to have an energizing officer on on with us on a Friday morning. Absolutely. Every day. <laughs> Any day that ends in Y, right? <laughs> there you go, Dan. Nice, nice to have you here. Hey, give our audience, I know we've had you before, give our audience a little background on Sonic Boom, and then I want to get into, you know, talking about wearable wellness. I think it's a great, great topic for today. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Sonic Boom was founded seven years ago by myself and my co-founder because we realized that there was a lack of engagement in the wellness industry. So companies are hiring people to get their employees healthier. That's a great concept. Mm -hmm. But they were all doing it the same way, and it wasn't working. They were all doing biometrics and health assessments and coaching, and nobody was taking part. It wasn't fun. So we said, hey, let's make this fun. Let's make it engaging. And that way we can really have an impact on helping people improve those daily health habits. So we've been doing that. We were the first to gamify wellness. And we're a wellness engagement company. Yeah, I can't imagine anyone working with you, Dana, and not having fun. So, yeah, <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Life talk, should be fun. Yeah, it should be. Hey, talk about the you know everyone. I mean, everyone's talking about it now. Wearable wellness. Uh, you know, talk to us a little bit about that, and uh, and it's and what you folks are doing, but where you see this whole category uh, moving forward. Yeah, whoo, hot topic, right? Yeah. So everyone's talking wearable wellness because. There are a lot of devices out there, and they're cool gadgets, and they track your activity and that sort of thing. So probably the best known is the Fitbit, and people are tracking their steps and their time and their distance. So we took a look at this because we've been using devices now for seven years to validate people's um, activity levels. We took a look at Fitbit and all of the others out there and said, you know, they're just missing. They're missing what we really want to see in a device. So we created this wish list. If we had the perfect device what would it have? We said, well, it would have. It would be a smartwatch. So you've got all of your smartwatch features, even email and text messages, things like that. It would, of course, track your activity. Had to be accurate. It would be a communication tool. So one of the things that employers run into is how do you reach those people who are not sitting in front of a computer? And so this is actually a two-way communication device as well. And then, woohoo! let's put the program right there on people's wrist. So it's a four-in-one device, and it's truly a game changer in the wellness world. Um, you know, a lot of those devices out there, too, are 100 bucks, 130 bucks way too expensive for the corporate market. Yeah, really. We've brought that down to about 50. Now, Dan, Dan, how, how, got... how much, I'm sorry, Dan, how much, 50, you said? Yeah, about, about 50 or 60, depending on quantity. And that's, this is your boomerang product, right? Yeah, it's okay. called the boomerang. Okay. Okay, now Dana, that was a you migrated from an from an older product to this newer product, Boomerang. Exactly. So we used to support a device called the Pebble that you wear on your foot, and mm -hmm. it was it was highly accurate. It did a lot of things that we needed it to do. Great device, but it just didn't do everything. So we said, let's create this wish list of everything we need a device to do, mm -hmm. and that's how we came up with the Boomerang. So there is it. Do you have other devices, or is this your your main device at, at this point? We can integrate with any device. So okay. if people at the work site already have a Fitbit or a Garmin, that's fine. They can use it. But we are supporting and selling just these two devices now, the Boomerang and then our previous product, the Pebble. Now, you have a you have a term here on the production sheet that I'm interested in. It says, what does the concept of BYOD mean to corporate wellness? I think please, I can guess yeah. what that please is. Please enlighten me. <laughs> 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 All right. So BYOD is this new buzz term in the wellness industry, and it stands for bring your own device. Uh -huh. And what the employers are saying now is, okay, most of you or many of you have bought a device already, so a Fitbit or a Garmin or whatever, and so we're going to allow you to use that device in your corporate wellness program. But there are some problems with the BYOD concept. Mm -hmm. What are those? <laughs> I thought you might ask. So the problem with BYOD is that if you've got a really engaging program, you're doing a lot with the back end. You're taking that data. You're doing lots of manipulation. You're doing contests, a lot of social interaction. We say that our program is socially contagious because people get so excited about it, they bring their friends into the program, too. So if you have a BYOD concept and one person is wearing a Fitbit, another person is wearing a uh, boomerang, then you've got a completely unlevel playing field. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. When we put you into a contest and that Fitbit over-reports by 30%, mm. and you're wearing an accurate boomerang, you're going to be a little missed. Uh, so yeah. we encourage clients not to mix devices like that. Even though it's the hottest trend, people talk about device agnosticism. Eh, it's just not a good idea because people are not going to want to play if they perceive that some people have an unfair competitive advantage. Yeah, that seems to make a lot of sense. You uh, Talk to us about your concern around, I know you're, you're pro-consumerism as it relates to, you know, your piece, but you're concerned about too much consumerism of wellness, correct? Yeah, absolutely. So what's happening is people are using their Fitbits and they, they think that it's a great device, and it might be for a couple of months until mm-hmm. they lose interest. And sometimes clients will say, that's enough. And then and from a consumerism standpoint, that's they're relying upon people to be intrinsically motivated to use their devices that they purchased at Best Buy or wherever, and to call that, they're calling that a wellness program. That alone is not a wellness program. Right. And right. frankly, people will stick with it for a couple of months, but they're not going to stick with it forever. How many right. people out there in your audience right now have purchased some sort of really cool gadget for tracking their activity, <laughs> and it's now sitting in their undies drawer. <laughs> Probably a lot. I got my 10,000-step thing on. I can't find it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the whole thing. Is you just People lose interest unless there's something really engaging pulling them together and driving that sustained engagement. So, what is, so Dana, what does the employer do? I mean, knowing that that's something that – that could be in the mindset of their employee consumers. What What's the role of the employer to to kind of combat that? Well, these days, wellness in the sense that it's an, an actual formal wellness program has become a business imperative. There are very few companies, especially large companies, that do not have a solid wellness program in place. And they're actually migrating toward more and more effective ones. What they're realizing is that, Even if they had a formal wellness program in place that they purchased a couple of years ago, chances are it's not engaging and it's just not sustaining that massive engagement that they were hoping to see. So they're working toward more of engagement-type programs, and they're steering away from the traditional things like biometrics and health assessments, coaching, and they're saying, okay, if we're going to have an effect on people's lives and ultimately our bottom line, we have to get people involved. If they're not engaged, they're not improving their health habits. You can know your numbers all day long, but what are you going to do about it to make a difference? So the so, and this is me seeking to understand because you got a lot of big players coming into the wearable. I mean, we've seen what Apple's doing, what some others are doing with your boomerang device. So you you have the gamification piece on there. You, you can do the trackability, but but what other pieces are in the boomerang? Is there data analytics? Is there anything that's telling the employee consumer? Uh, more things about their wellness than, than ever before? Is that kind of the where these things have moved? I think the benefit of this device in particular is that it provides so much in one. So it's, it's mm-hmm. four devices in one. You've got the smartwatch capabilities, and, and you can even be you know, riding your bike and see that you're getting a phone call right there on your wrist. Mm-hmm. It's got the program right in there. This is something that no other device has. So we've got, for instance, a program called Kacha Being Healthy, or module as part of our program. And it's where people reward each other for healthy behaviors. So if I catch you eating an apple instead of a bagel or having quinoa for lunch, I can reward you points for that. Now you're going to see that right there on your wrist. Okay. Dana gave you five points for eating quinoa. And then I think most importantly is that communication aspect. So let's pretend you're an employer and you've got a whole bunch of remote employees. You just do not have contact with them. And it's open enrollment time. And you need to send them their open enrollment paperwork. Make sure they sign it by October 25th. You now can send them a message, either individually or as a group, right there on their wrist and say, huh. have you filled out your open enrollment paperwork? And they oh. send one back that says yes, and then you can track that too. What about a coach? So now you've got a personal trainer. <clears throat> personal trainer says, hey, Dana, don't forget today is you've got to eat a high-protein lunch, and you've got to do 35 push-ups after you've eaten. So they send me this message, did you do the 35 push-ups? I can send back yes or no. Or how is your energy level today? Is it a 3 or a 5? And I can send back it's a 5 today. So we can track that as well. And basically you're coaching right to the wrist. Mm-hmm. So everything, the the boomerang is the hub. Exactly. Well, Sonic Boom is the hub, and the boomerang is one of the one of the really crucial spokes. I got you. I got you. Okay. Now, now, now Dana, can you, can, through your model, do you, 
partner with some of the other wellness players to, uh, to develop the, the integrated approach? I mean, how do you how do you work uh, in in connecting and serving the employer's needs? Yeah, that's a great question. So we serve as the nucleus, mm -hmm. and then if they have other players that they want involved in their wellness program, let's say they do want biometric screenings mm -hmm. or they want a really robust health assessment, we integrate that data. So we've you know, we're also a software company. I said we're an engagement wellness company, but we're a software company. So we've got sophisticated platforms for bringing all that information in. So if they want to set up an incentive program, let's say they want to give you a $100 reduction on your, <clears throat> on your insurance premiums, if you do certain things, we tie all of that together. We've got an incentive management platform. Then we take the information from the biometrics vendor and the health assessment vendor. We can even see if they've contributed to their 401k, any vendor whatsoever, pull it into the program, and now the employee knows exactly where they stand in terms of getting that ultimate incentive, the premium reduction or PTO or whatever whatever their incentive currency may be. Now, Dan, we got about a minute left on the program. Kind of leave, leave our audience with kind of one or two good takeaways on, you know, what they need to be considering when they're looking at this type of solution. I think the most important thing to consider is, are the companies that they're looking at truly getting massive engagement? More importantly, is it sustained? Because anybody can get excited about a program for a few months, but keeping them sustained in a program for a few years is what it's all about. A simple walking program just isn't going to cut it. It's got to have a lot to it. It's like going to Disneyland. If you went to Disneyland and there was just one ride, you're going to get bored, and you may not appeal to everybody. So there really has to be a lot going on. It has to be fun, engaging, and sustainable. Mm -hmm. And let them, let them know where they can find you, Dana. Sure thing. We are at sonicboomwellness.com. And, and uh, you know, we really appreciate you coming on the program, Dana. I would, would hope uh, if you can make it out to IHC Forum West, we'd love to have you out there in Las Vegas, November 10th through 12th. And to our audience, you know, we still have the $99 Super Saver rates out there as well. And to everybody who's listening to the program, privatehealthcareexchanges.com promo code is IHC. Radio in all caps, and so go there to get your discounts. And, uh, Dana, again, have a great weekend out there on the West Coast. And to the rest of our audience, uh, we'll see you next Friday on Healthcare Consumerism Radio. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks.